what I'd like to do is, is talk about banks from an investor's perspective. Um, and, and, and it's one in which I think we have uh, lessons to learn ourselves as investors about expectations, but also in terms of what we should be, what we're asking banks to think about in terms of in, when we engage with banks, uh, both as creditors as, and as uh, equity shareholders. But I, I think it's an important point that we, you know, well, maybe to start with, um, to paraphrase Count von Metternich in the 19th century said that when France sneezes, Europe catches cold. Well, I think these days when the banks sneeze, the, the global economy catches cold, or at least important parts of the global economy catch cold. It's a way of saying that banks are unique, and I think we need to reflect upon this. So when we think about banks, particularly in settings like this, we certainly have to think in terms of the, the debt securities and the equity securities in the banks that we own, but it, it can't stop there. Uh, first of all, their banks are essential to the so-called real economy, the, the types of companies, industrial companies that we invest in. We invest in a lot more industrial companies than we do in, invest in banks. So what, and we, we have to recognize that a healthy financial system not only helps banks, but it also helps the other parts of the economy that we're, look, that we're investing in. And I think this is particularly true as well at the governmental uh, level. There is a contingent liability that has existed exists and I believe will continue to exist at, at, at the state level about uh, the, 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 abil the, the need for the, the state, at least in certain circumstances, to support the banking sector. And even if we do have regulatory reform that improves it, I, I don't suspect it's going to go away entirely to zero. And I think we've already seen uh, in the Eurozone and the United States how the credit quality of banks, how that can shift liability to the public sector in a way that hurts investors, if nothing else. We've seen the debt the United States and many Eurozone companies downgraded <coughs> uh, as a result, effectively, of a banking problem. So we're talking about systemic importance on the one hand. We're also talking about a very, you, you, I think the word complexity was used quite a bit, which is absolutely true. But one of the complexities, I think, that makes banks a also unique is there's a, such a huge stakeholder base that needs to be reflected in terms of how boards, managers, uh, and even investors look at banks. Uh, there are obviously regulators, governments, politicians, media, uh, uh, retail customers, uh, civil society at large that are continuously putting banks uh, on the back foot. Uh, the Bishop of Durham just this re recently in Switzerland uh, made a speech where he basically lambasted banks as effectively trying to socialize losses and privatize <laughs> profits. And it's, it's that type of reputational damage which I think can do serious damage ultimately to the, to the types of institutions that we're looking at. So we need to think, I think, about banks differently uh, from other types of companies. And this is something that we as shareholders and, and bond investors need to, I think, appreciate better than we do. Um, Julian, I think that there, you could argue that there is a duty of care at some, uh, existing in the company's law of 2006, and, and, the, and the section that speaks to the duty to promote the success of the company does speak of uh, the director's need to have regard for, while serving the ultimate interest of the members of the company, the means to do that is by making sure you're taking care of of appropriate stakeholder interests, which can indeed be uh, regulators, it can uh, other types of people who, who are affected by the system. But I think the reality is that this is becoming much more of a dynamic problem. I think that there's a huge sensitivity uh, in the public at large about the banking system and what it's done <coughs> to the economy. And this is putting pressures on the banks in, in ways that I think, if, amongst other things, are, are increasing costs. But so I think banks and bank boards, they're very complex, dealing with a, a mass of dynamic stakeholder issues, and they still need to make money because they need to make themselves attractive to, to private sector capital. Because if we have a banking system that isn't attractive to, to, to debt or, or equity from the private sector is basically a dangerous <laughs> banking system. So I think it, it really is a balancing act that banks need to get right. I also think on our side, on the investor side, we need to be a bit, to try to assume a role of being a bit more of uh, enlightened self-interest, perhaps as a universal owner, because we don't only own bank equities and stock, but again, we, we own the, the market, as, if you will, and we need to ensure that, that uh, we need to prioritize. I like your point about safety, because I think we need to prioritize 
a safe uh, and ethical, a sound system uh, as, as paramount <coughs> uh, to producing uh, to, to investor returns, particularly with regard to, to, uh, to short-term profitability metrics, which uh, investors tend to be focusing on perhaps more than they should. Um, I think uh, we talked about the, the, the spate of ethics violations over the course of the summer. It was really a bad summer for banks with money laundering, LIBOR, PPI, uh, you know, violation of Iranian sanctions, et cetera. Again, these are creating new issues for banks that at the time, I think banks, many of the boards either didn't think that they were doing anything wrong or perhaps didn't even know what was going on. And, if there was, and the result is that the public trust in the system is, is at all-time lows. And a recent Edelman study showed that uh, the banking system really, rank, compared to other sectors, ranking very poorly, e even below the media. <laughs> uh, the media came in a close next even to last. Even below that? But yeah. Um, so what is it that we should be asking banks to do and bank boards to think about? Well, this sounds corny, particularly in a business school, because this isn't a new idea, but they need to think perhaps a bit more, and again, this is maybe where the ethicist might come in, in terms of the, the, the priority is to have a, a, a mission to serve customers and not necessarily a mission to make money. And I think in the long, it's a cliche, but I think uh, in the light of recent events, I think that that is something that, that I think has to be a cultural bedstone for, for how banks manage themselves. Financial management is something that, that uh, banks obviously are focusing on, and the risk management is, is clearly a part of what they're doing. But I think what we need to think about is having sustainable profitability metrics, particularly given the reality of higher capitalization, which, which uh, I think we need to think more in terms of economic profitability, uh, which reflects business risks, than returns on equity, and I'm going to return to that in a minute. I think we be, need to be more realistic about profit targets uh, and, and that can be uh, achieved sustainably through internal risk tolerances. We don't want banks trying to, to drive around the bend of the road too, <coughs> too quick in a way that's going to put themselves in, in the system I think we'll at, have to get back risk. to those questions later as well because we're I, running I, out of time <laughs> <Okay>. otherwise. <laughs> fine, fine. Yeah. Um, the, the, only thing, the only thing I would just say on the yeah. creditor point, I think Julian... Uh, I, am, I, I do think that there's, at some level, a very philosophical difference between senior bank debt and preferred stock, and given the, particularly given the concept of bail-in, uh, to me this means that banks, the, you know, it underscores the point that banks bear the residual risk uh, of, of bank failures, and to the extent uh, that uh, banks, that, that creditors are facing these risks, I'm, I'm not sure I think I'd, I'd like to discuss the point about creditor rights in terms of uh, control rights. At, at, a some, at some point, that might kick in, but I do believe that, uh, first of all, creditors need to be more active and can be. I also think that shareholders need to think more like creditors because at the end of the day, they're mutually independent, interdependent.